questioning God and showing disbelief? No. And that's a very interesting question because it shows that Christ is actually asking all of us in the presence of God for what was his sacrifice. So it is a way to make us reflect on what is happening. What is all of that? What is the meaning of all those people getting together to see a punishment, a terrifying punishment of an innocent person? The sacrifice of someone that only chose to bring God's love to this world. Hi, my name is Nicholas and welcome to my channel. This is my first video and I've chosen this date because it is a very important day for all of us Christians and to all of those that decided to study about Christ. I'm talking about Easter. This is a day where we are called to reflect upon Christ's sacrifice for all of us. But first, let me introduce myself. As I said, my name is Nicolas de Paiva. I am an ecumenical preacher in my church, the religion of God, of the Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Through this video, I'm able to talk with you so that you can start reflecting on how to conduct your life, how to see in Christ's sacrifice for all of us, in Christ's passion for all of us, the necessary turn point for you to change your life, for you to start seeing your life as a beacon of light of God in this world. So let's start by reading the passage in the Gospel of Jesus according to Matthew, chapter 27, verse 45 to 56. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he is calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave his spirit to God. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. This 
This is a very strong passage, let's say, because we are seeing here the moment where Christ is going to God, is giving his spirit to God. But there is a question right in the beginning and that we all think of this question as moment of disbelief. But is that true? Let's see another meaning for this moment, for the passion of Christ, the whole moment of him sacrificing himself to all of us. And there is one book that brings to this question to see uh, how we can change our perspective of this question. And it is this book here. Uh, I have the Portuguese version, but I don't know if there is an English one, to be honest. I hope they, they've already translated. It is a dialogue between Dr. Viktor Frankl and Pinchas Lapaid, a Jewish theologian. And they are talking about, uh, it is even the title of this book, The Search of God and Questions About Meaning. So let's keep that in mind. Let's think about the meaning of the passion of Christ to all of us. And we will start with this question, as I was saying, because here uh, Lapaid, he brings us this notion that the translation of this passage, especially these words in Hebrew, were not quite precise. He is telling us that this question of Christ, which is in Psalms chapter 22, it is not translated to why have you forsaken me, but actually for what have you forsaken me? This changes a lot of the meaning of this passage. So it is not Christ questioning God and showing disbelief, no. And that's a very interesting question because it shows that Christ is actually asking all of us in the presence of God for what was his sacrifice. So it is a way to make us reflect on what is happening. What is all of that? What is the meaning of all those people getting together to see a punishment, a terrifying punishment of an innocent person. The sacrifice of someone that only chose to bring God's love to this world. And it is in that perspective that it starts our damnation. Because as we see in the Gospel of Christ according to John chapter 3rd verses 16 to 18. John writes that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. It is not Christ condemning us. No, it is us condemning ourselves for denying Christ and for putting an innocent person to crucifixion. And that question of Christ, it is to us. It is not to God. He is asking us, for what is all this? For what is all this movement against someone that it's only trying to show you how to love, how to live, how to dedicate yourself to a divine love? So, every time that we are in our lives facing challenges, facing our moments of disbelief, our moments of suffering. 
we can then ask ourselves, for what? For what we are suffering? For what this is happening? It is the same as Christ when he asks us, and we are who can give meaning to that question. Let's put it this way. When you see your mom, your dad, or even someone that you love sacrificing himself, herself to you for your well-being, for you to achieve your goals, to achieve your dreams, don't you question yourself for what this all is happening? And then by questioning, you start to search for meaning you start to work hard or work smart or even try your best to give meaning to that person suffering. It is the same idea with Christ. When we see the story of Christ, when we see his gospel and read about all the suffering that he faced and then he directly question us for what it is a moment to think it is a moment to reflect and see for what i'm making him suffer for what i'm doing this and it is a moment to show our passion to christ and this idea that was brought by brother Pavanetto in his book the final meaning of the passion of christ at the end of times is to make us show our passion to Christ. It is not the time for Christ to show his passion for us. Not anymore. Now it's time for us to show our passion to Christ. To give our best, to work hard, work smart in ways that we can show to Jesus that we are giving meaning to his suffering, to his dedication, to his devotion to us. He is the one that chose all of us to come to this world and fulfill a mission, a spiritual mission. Again, we always are looking for ways to question others, to question life. Uh, what is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of all my suffering? What is the meaning of all that? So this meaning of Christ's passion to all of us, it is the same as uh, when Dr. Frankel in his uh, book, Man's Search for Meaning. But Dr. Victor Frankel, he brings us another perspective to life. He actually tell us this. At this point, it would be helpful a conceptual turn through 180 degrees, after which the question can no longer be, what can I expect from life? But can now only be, what does life expect of me? What task in life is waiting for me? You see the difference? Now let's put that perspective to that question of Christ in his crucifixion, in the moment where he goes to God, we can then understand his question as what does Jesus expect of me? When he asks for what God is this moment of forsaken? For what is this moment of suffering? So he is questioning us, you, me, to put meaning to all of this, strive to show now our passion to him. And we need to ask this question because sometimes it seems that we only seek for religion to attend to our material and psychological needs rather than to really look into as a way to help us find an active and deeper meaning through our own effort with the natural help of Christ. But then you can ask, okay, how can I see a way through this? How can I talk to God? How can I talk to Christ and 
start to see or put meaning to all this suffering. Pray, ask, talk to God. Honestly, stop this video at this moment and pray to God. Honestly, open your heart in this moment where we are all called to reflect upon Christ's sacrifice, to reflect on the new life also that He brings to us with His resurrection. And let's try to not use this time of prayer to only ask for stuff from Jesus or God, but to truly engage in a deeper and meaningful debate that can guide us in this life that we are currently living. As Dr. Viktor Frankl also argues, religion is the search for ultimate meaning. So let's search for this ultimate meaning in our lives. Because as I said, it is a day of reflection upon Christ's sacrifice to us, but also a day of reflection of the new life that Christ gives to all of us. Because as we can see here in this passage, after His resurrection, many holy people came to life and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. So even after everything that we did for Him, he still resurrect all of those souls. That is, He still brought new life for all those lives and He still can do that. Again, in that example, when you see someone that you love sacrificing himself or herself for your sake and then you acquire all that strength to then change yourself, to do something and make that person's life better, help that person to put meaning to her or his suffering for you, you are getting a new life. It is the same sense, it is the same idea. So that's it. Let's put meaning in this life. Let's not uh, ask to life, as Dr. Frankel put it here, what can I expect from life? No, let's change that. What does Jesus expect of me? Let's put that in our minds and make as a step for us to achieve spiritual greatness. And to finish, I want to bring this excerpt from the book of Brother Paivanetto entitled Jesus, the Pain and the Origin of His Authority, the Power of Christ Within Us where he writes, in the example of Christ, therefore, not for our defeat in discouragement, but aiming for victory, since I have enabled you to take even torment and with it leverage courage. So let's have courage. Let's have courage to give meaning to this question. What does Jesus expect of me? Thank you for watching this video. I wish you a happy Easter and may we find in example of Christ the meaning for our lives. God is present. Jesus lives in our hearts forever. May the light of Christ be the north of your life.